Well, I'm Alexander Lytle, and for the last semester I have been working on a senior project of writing short stories. Um, just a fair bit of warning, uh, I had much less time than the other projects, so I spent, what, I, this is like something I whipped up last minute, um, but bear with me on this. Uh, so, um, I was going to assume there would be more students here, uh, so this is my little like plug for the senior project program. Um, students need to do this, this is one of the best things I've ever done in my life. It's honestly one of the best. Just being able to spend a whole semester on whatever you want to do is one of the best things you could possibly do. Um, so, one of the major quotes that I think inspired me was by, was writing to me is simply thinking through my fingers, which was said by Isaac Asimov. Um, if you don't know, he is one of the first like pioneers in science fiction writing. Um, he wrote stories like uh, iRobot, um, was that a robot? No, it wasn't. It was a. Uh, it was the first like robotics based artificial intelligence story, which I'm blanking on right now, and uh, the Foundation series, which is one of my favorite book series ever. Um, and then my personal quote for science fiction is science fiction is sitting around and thinking that'd be cool, um, which really is the entirety of my project right there. Um, so, what I do, I tell people that. I worked hard with the course semester, write sci-fi short stories, and had experience I thoroughly enjoyed. The truth of the matter, though, is I sat around for a minimum of three hours a day, wrote down whatever I thought of. Um, nine times out of ten, I just got rid of it at the end of the day, because that's how writing works. Um, to only about 20% of my stories made into the final cut. Well, so I think I wrote, I have five, right, which means I had about, I wrote a total of about 20 stories. Um, but only five of which were good enough for me. Um, uh, real question is, what is writing? Um, activity or skill marking coherent words on paper and composing text. That's not, that's a total joke I just threw in for the other students hoping to get a laugh. Um, but that's really all it is, just writing down whatever. You gotta write, like, people think that writing requires a lot of creativity or deep conceptual thought, but in reality it's just write down everything and just keep writing. If you keep writing, then eventually you'll get to something good. Um, so how did I do it? Well, there's this thing called the writing process, and it's different for everyone. It has good days and bad days, and it kind of drives people crazy. Um, specifically for me, my process is a bit, well, it's not too outlandish, but I think it's weird. Um, so you have to, for me, I always start with an idea. If I, the man I have an idea, I go and I write down, and once I sit down and start writing, I just take the, take the idea, see where it goes. I think only one story I knew where it was going to end before I started, um, and the other ones I just like, just create a world and want to see what happens. Um, again, actually writing it down, if you have an idea and don't write it down, it's useless, you're going to forget it. Um, this is, uh, this is one where people tell you not to do this, but for me, whenever I got stuck in with writer's block, goofing off is the first thing I went to. If I goof off for several hours, come back, it'd be just forgetting about the project and not doing anything. It's sort of like a reset button and it gives me the energy, or gave me the energy to, uh, to restart, keep going through, like, get past whatever's blocking me. Um, Another part of writing is re rewriting it, which I hate. When usually, I'm the kind of student who uh, writes a first draft, I'm like, that's it, that's all I'm going to hand in, this is my final. Um, but the reality of it is you have to rewrite several copies. Um, I think I edited, the stories I made to my final cut made it in a, a minimum, of, I think, six revisions, um, which was, that was a lot for me. <laughs> Um, and at the end of the, once you file, like once you're done with the story, that's hopefully the reaction that you get from people when you're writing science fiction. Um, so, my original idea was I was going to make a book and have a sort of like collection of the stories in like a physical volume. Um, but I sort, of, but I changed my mind on that, considering that it's all science fiction based, and put all of them onto these little CD drives, which are nearly useless. Um, but I felt really well with the aesthetic of a science fiction technology feel, and that you need a specific adapter in order to 
read them. I'm also planning on formatting it for an ebook platform like Amazon or Nook and preparing that for uh, distribution. I'm also considering making a physical book copy, just one or two, uh, for personal use or maybe further distribution, depending on whatever. Um, thanks, <laughs> Ask the Alien. Um, that's about it. Do any questions? Are you going to read them some of your stories? Um, no, but I do have the copies of them right there. I, yeah, I'm not going to read them. <laughs> Tell us about them then. Um, oh, well, that's actually a fair. Um, I think my favorite story is, it's one I wrote called Before the Fall. It is a science fiction retelling of the, uh, Book of Paradise, of, uh, and uh, what's it called? And the uh, story of Adam and Eve, essentially. Um, so it explores a lot of concepts like uh, what humanity can perceive as reality, um, good versus evil, order versus chaos, and um, human nature. Um, that one I think I spent the longest on. That was, I think, that one I spent three months just writing out. Um, for the first story I wrote for uh, was for a science fiction class I actually took here, which was uh, sort of the inspiration of my project. Um, it was more. It was about a military uh, encounter in space that uh, took that takes place really, really far in the future, and it's just, uh, that's where I was sort of exploring as to what I could really do with writing. Um, so I was just testing the waters. Um, I think that was the longest at 12 pages, I think. Um, that one was one of the most fun, funnest ones I've written. Um, yeah, now, that's the one that I'm just, Still amazed that I wrote. Uh, let's see. I also wrote. Well, also I failed to mention this. Every story is interlinked in some small way. So what I had originally done is I wrote every story, and then during my revision process, I went through and altered them in minor ways to uh, like add references to the other story. So it creates more of a complete world that way. Alex, did you find? writing to be a lonely process? Not at all. My specific, like, again, I said goofing off. Um, that's part of my process. Uh, usually what I would do is, whenever I'm writing, it's easiest for me to write whenever I'm surrounded by other people and other people are talking and trying to distract me. Um, specifically because that's where ideas come from, for me. So, you wouldn't consider it a lonely process, but at the same time, is it filled with characterization and things of that nature? The characters, are you, are, do you consider them fully developed? Specifically, well, because I'm writing short stories, it's hard to fully develop a character to a degree that I would consider fully developed. But I feel like, based on what I've, the way I've described each character, it, they fit their you can tell who the character is. You can understand who they are, their motivations, what's going on. Um, I think there's only one exception to this where I intentionally did not do that um, in my final story, which is a it's a log um, that a I'm trying to think of the best way to describe this a uh, like overseer or a person running a uh, or it's titled the the journal of overseer seer Grendel. And he is aboard a mining station, and his job is basically to keep everything running and make sure there's no problems. Um, then what he, uh, then as things go wrong, the station collapses, um, there's chaos ensues. And the story ends with him saying, this is like, stay away from this, or the log entries end with him saying, this is stay away from this place. And the next paragraph begins with a new character having read the log and looks, looks around and then puts it back and begins to leave the room and it ends on the thing regarding that chaos.
mentioned Asimov. Do you have any other big influences in terms of sci-fi? Yes. Um, Asimov was, I think, the biggest one. Just because that was where the biggest scale was. Um, stories like... Or not, or not, oh, yeah, stories, I guess. Um, Ender's Game was a big one. Um, which was by Orson Scott Card. I... There was a recent uh, game that came out called Prey, which was a heavy influence towards my last story. Um, there was uh, shows like Stargate Atlantis and Star Trek were big ones. Um, Star Wars was a classic. Um, there was one more I wrote down. Um, oh, Pathfinder. That's another Orson Scott book. Did you find this a satisfying experience? Very. This was, like I've always, for a long time I've always tinkered with the idea of writing, but I never actually got around to it. And then once I made the senior project, I kind of had to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and it really gave, it gave me the opportunity to explore and try something that I've always really enjoyed. So a senior project is one period well, or two? For me it was two. Typically, though, it's supposed to be a minimum of three. Oh, okay. Yes. So, and did you stay here and write, or did you go home? Or what I was always in the building during my senior project periods, um, except because it didn't matter where I was for writing, and I only had two, so I was here anyway. Um, but what I uh, what I would do is during points when I would just get after a while, I would just tend to get burnt out on writing, like I'd just be out of ideas, can't even goof off, and I'd just get up and just go for a walk around the school. Um, and then in doing that, I think that I was able to, like that's another helpful way to just reset, just go take a walk, come back to it, yeah. Were you mostly in the library? Mostly, yes. And um, are you going to pursue your interest in writing in college? Um, for college, I'm, to a degree. Um, what I'm considering for college is, well, I'm not entirely sure what I want to do yet, but I am considering uh, a degree in education, and I feel like the writing and education go somewhat hand in hand. So, having been a department chairman of English, I will tell you, they definitely go hand in hand. Good luck. And where will you go? Um, I'm currently signed up to Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts. Um, but I prefer them to take a gap year to either be a EMT or to go to Thailand and work in uh, schools. Cool. Bravo. Yeah. And so you have your stories on those little CDs. Yes. Any, any way you can stick them into that computer? Yes. I, scan through? Or? Yep. This was also something that I, uh, like I drew this essentially uh, using text, or ASCII, which is a quote-unquote coding language that is used to make images. So, um, so this is the I didn't write, I didn't, I did that. I did not put the stories in the order that I wrote them. I put them in a story that I felt was, or in an order that I felt was more thematic. Um, starting with side effects may include, before the fall, 07204035, Question of Lovick's Harp, and Journal of Overseer Grendel. Um, side effects follows uh, a character named David and his friend Evan, who are into this kind of like shady sort of uh they well they have this device called ambrose and the point of an ambrose is you inject yourself full of nan nanites and the robots trick your body into experiencing different things sort of like virtual reality um for them however things go wrong when it malfunctions and they wake up they take the nanites out and they go amongst their day only to find out that they never actually left it. So they wake up again, take it out, go through the day, wake up again. 
Um, and I think that story was one of my, I think this one's my, one of my personal favorites just for the ending. Um, because this one, this story is just perfectly cyclical and ends wondering if they can ever break the cycle. Uh, for the fall, as I talked about, this one is a retelling of the Book of Creation. Um, and this story, I, I renamed uh, Adam Adamus with the Latin spelling, and as well as I did for Eve, which is uh, Heba. Um, and it just follows through their quote-unquote day as Paradise Falls. Uh, um, this one is was another classroom project that I tinkered with um, for my crime fiction class. I really did not like crime fiction noir because it's almost the opposite of science fiction. So I instead wrote a crime fiction story based around like a futuristic scenario. Um, this is where this story follows a security officer who is interrogating a criminal who supposedly robbed a bank. And it follows all these little avenues of this of the criminal's past and trying to get him to admit to what he's done. Then the last one, which is the best design one, I should get that one. Journal over Sue Brendel. This one I think is the most different. Yeah, Journal over Sue Brendel, it's a series of logs. Each log is dated um, with a timestamp. Um, by the way, GST is not Gingrich uh, standard time, but it is a galactic standard time. Big, uh, big difference. I have a lot of um, And I think I just have it set up so the dates follow for a little bit over a month. Um, this is a very long one. Yes. Well, it's also spaced out quite a bit. Um, and it ends with the character named Morgan, characters Morgan and Fish, reading the, reading the log and reflecting on the events. And sci-fi is your interest? Um, originally, I wanted to make... Well, my original idea for the project was I was going to just accept stories from whoever I could. Like, just I'd write stuff, other people would write stuff, I just put it all together. But then very few people would actually write stuff. Um, so I just only put the stuff I put, or I only put the stuff I was writing. And 90% of the stuff I was writing happened to be science fiction. Um, so all the stories that made it in were science fiction based. Do you think you would ever just write classical fiction? I've tried writing fantasy before, um, like that's uh, what's it? like fantasy and science fiction are very, very closely uh, related. Mm -hmm. The difference is one has magic and one has technology. <laughs> um, in terms of realistic fiction, I don't think that that is the sort of avenue I would go down. Um, just because I like, I prefer to think of what if and what could be, as opposed to what is possible. Again, I say bravo. Yeah. So you were saying that crime fiction, you were talking about the differences between crime fiction and science fiction, and you said they were opposites. Specifically noir, um, because that relates to an era with very quote-unquote limited technology, um, and the spacing and mood is more about suspense and more about, uh, like, facts and figuring out what's happening, where science fiction typically tells you more, like this happens, this happens, this is this, and then lets the reader, like, imagine. Any other questions? Thank you.